Good morning. Christy and Jimbo here from Crimbo's Chronicles. Yesterday on our excursions, we found the uh, home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. If you don't know, it's the Little House on the Prairie show. She was the writer of several novels that uh, the show was based off of. And the novels are based off of her life. And I loved it as a child and I still love it. I watch it all the time, torture Jimbo with it. Got to put my seatbelt on before the dinging starts. Anyway, we are headed out to go see the little house on the prairie town. Little town on the prairie is what they refer themselves to. So let's get it started and get going. Ready, babe? <laughs> of the Charles Ingalls family came true. We hope to help you enjoy the wonder of this prairie while learning about homestead. When Congress passed the Homestead Act of 1862, land fever spread like a prairie fire. Hopeful settlers from many different parts of the world looked upon the vast sea of prairie grass rippling in the wind and yearned to claim a piece of this free land and make it their own. Charles and Caroline Ingalls and their two daughters, Mary and Laura, lived in the big woods of Wisconsin near Pepin. Charles was stricken with a serious case of land fever. Before he found a cure, his family traveled by covered wagon over 1,550 miles to the little house on the prairie near Independence, Kansas, to the banks of Plum Creek in Minnesota, to Burroak, Iowa, back to Walnut Grove, and finally here to Dakota Territory on Ingalls Homestead near the little town on the prairie. In the summer of 1879, Paul, as Laura called him, came to DeSmith, working on the railroad. His girls, Ma, Mary, Laura, Carrie, and Grace, met him in the fall. They spent their first winter in the surveyor shanty on the shores of Silver Lake. In February 1880, Paul picked this quarter section of land to be their homestead. Paul met the homestead requirements since he was over 21 years of age, farmed over 10 acres, and built a little shanty that would be their home over the next five years. Charles and Caroline made good on their bet with Uncle Sam. In 1886, proof papers were filed and published. For a mere $16 in filing fees, this 160-acre farm became theirs. Alright, so we are on the Ingalls Homestead. And we're going to follow a map. First things first, we gotta climb this. Okay, the view from the tower. We're gonna go out there. So I guess they got regular camping right there too. All right, so we're gonna go in that building. It's got her travels, visits, Laura Engel Wilder travels. There's a little farm out there the horse barn and Flint's garage out there and then there's a little church way out there let's go walk the ground the old playground set let's go into this building here oh wow Free land. It's amazing back in the day how they just gave away the land. Whoever got there first. Oh, covered wagon. I imagine this might be her covered wagon from her travels. So she lived in Pepin, Wisconsin. Walnut Grove, Minnesota. Desmet, South Dakota, which is where we're at. Let's see. The books that were written here, or about here, The Long Winter, 
apparently the uh, they had a historic bad winter that year when she wrote that book, Little ha Town on the Prairie. I'm gonna need to have all these books. These happy golden years. So all of these in the first four years, all of these were written based on being in Dismet. And there's Burr Oak, Iowa. Old Town in the Green Groves. I didn't realize the books were in the other ones. Independence, Kansas. Little House on the Prairie. And then go back to Pepin. It was Little House in the Big Woods. And in Walnut Grove, it was on the banks of Plum Creek. So the Little House on the Prairie TV show, I don't know if I said, is based on the novels that she wrote that were autobiographical about her life living in these different locations. Okay, so down this hill, we're going to find the dugout and shanty, or shanty. Uh, basically a little tiny place that's all they could build when they first claimed their territory. Tiny little, basically a shack. The shanty. Laura hurry, hurried to the little tar paper shack. She said to Ma, it's a tiger stripe. What are you talking about, Laura asked Ma. Our shanty striped with yellow lath on the black paper. She said it looked like a tiger, I guess. That was hard to read, sorry. It's lined with like newspaper. That bed does not look comfortable at all. They probably have hay in it. Makes me want to lift it up. I can't do it. Huh. My mom's old dress. Oh, that's big enough, right? What's cooking? Nineteen eighteen seventy eight shanty air claim shanty. Walls insulated with newspaper. All right, is there a dugout down here too? Oh, I didn't see it. So a dugout is usually made into the ground like that with the uh, grass covering it. Yikes. Oh, smells like dirt. Much darker. Yikes. It's just all ground here. Ooh, a sod house. 1877 this one's from. Okay, let's make our way out of here. It smells, smells like you're deep inside, because <laughs> you are. All right, we've come to the hay roof barn. Called that because it's got a hay roof. Oh, it's got a... Uh, Birdie's living in here. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Oh my goodness! Hi, honey! Oh, you are so cute! You have bird friends. So this one's a milk producing cow. A cute one. Oh, you spoke my language, dude. <coughs> mommy? Is that you, Mommy? 
Oh, making him get up. He's only 10 days old. Hi, pretty baby. Look at those eyes. You might be upsetting it. What are you clucking about? Oh, you guys are waiting for food? Well, it says Mrs. Bose gave Ma Ingalls a clutch of baby chicks. Children were often in charge of chicken chores. Are there more animals over there? There's poop box here, so something's over here. <gasps> kittens are to remain in the... There's kittens in here. Kitty, 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 kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Hmm. I'd love to see a kitty right now. Oh, but this cow. He's so stinking cute, I don't want to leave. Likes Jumbo better than me. <laughs> All right. Where do you want him? Well, you don't want to stand behind this thing. No siree. Manure spreader. <laughs> Go down to their water pump down here. Paw digs a well. Last thing to do is dig a well, said Paul. I wonder if that still works. There's water in the bucket. Babe, pump it and see. <laughs> oh, I hear it. What is it. Oh, it's working. <laughs> That's cool. Good job, Pa. Thank you. Where are you folks from? Florida. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a little ways away. We didn't know that uh, this place existed at all. Yeah, have you been to any other, other places? No, we were making our way there. Yeah. This came first. Are you going to Walnut Grove? No, 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 no. The other in town. Oh, okay. The Smet, right? The you Smet. Read all the books? No. Okay, you're going to Bear's house, which you'll see. When you go in town, okay. If you do that, sure. right? That's and we were headed there first, but mm -hmm. wound up. And there it used first. to sit on the lake. It's not there anymore. There's a little park over there that was beside it, where the survey house was on the other side of the lake. But they moved it into town. That's the. It was the only original build, the only building at the time they came here. Well, while they were living in the survey house, which was eight, that fall and winter of 1879, Pa found this 160 acres to homestead. So in February, he filed the papers, built a house the size of this room, which is a 10 by 14. Wow. Excuse me, I didn't know about the books so much. I knew that there were books, mm -hmm. and I knew that it was an autobiographical story, but I grew up watching it. Yeah. 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. even now I torture him. It still comes on, so I still watch it. And the sad yeah. thing is, there's not a lot of truth in that. I mean, it's a good TV show. Yeah, and it, yeah. And it, it, it got a, you know, I would love to read the books. Yeah. I'm going to have to. All right, so if this is a horse barn, what does that mean inside? Because I didn't expect any animals already. I've fallen in love with a cat, a cow. Oh, oh, you can practice lassoing. You want to practice, babe? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Good morning. Gophers. We've never seen gophers before until now. Why is the pony hugged up under? Is that mama? 
Oh. How old is that? He's three months old. Oh. Which kind of makes him like a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> it's like the barbed wire museum. Oh, have you ever been to the barbed wire museum? No. Oh. No, it's not my kind of thing either, but they've got a ton of it. I deal with a lot of it, but I don't. There's people who actually collect barbed wire. Oh, no. And this is one of four boards that we have, but we kept tipping over on the wind, so we just deal with one. I'm. I've been cut up quite a few times by red brown barbed wire, so I just stay with that. You even know a kind of, of barbed wire. That's great. Wow. But this here, we focus a little bit on her first book, In the Big Woods, with that over there. And then this right here, we focus a lot about The Long Winter. So The Long Winter was her sixth book, I believe, and it was the winter of 1880. And that is what takes place here, right in the Smith. And that was actually the worst record, or the worst winter in South Dakota history. So here in South Dakota, we get a ton of snow. Um, and because of all that snow, all of our trains got stuck out in Minnesota. So during the winter of 1880, it was DeSmit's first year as a town, and they were very dependent on these trains. These trains were bringing in coal and food for them. So they would use the coal to burn in their fires, to heat up their houses, and to heat up their food. So it's the middle of winter, it's freezing cold, we're going to want some heat in our house. So we don't have any coal to burn. The next thing most people would think to burn would be wood or trees. So when the Ingalls family first moved out here, Laura talks about how it was a treeless prairie and how she would get lost in the miles and miles of prairie grass. So there was no wood, there was no coal, but what they did have a lot of was grass. So here we have a little bit of reed canary grass. So the Ingalls family would use a lot of slough grass for this. Um, you may hear some people talking about big blue stem um, all that kind of stuff out there. So they would have used the slough grass for this because it didn't have any nutritional value. And then that big blue stem was super nutritious, so they'd feed that to their horses and all their livestock. So without any coal or trees, the only thing that they had to burn was grass. So if we just threw some loose grass in the fire, it'd burn up in a couple seconds. And if we did that, we would be out of grass before the winter even started. So what we do is we take it and we twist it up super tight so Laura talks about making hay twists. She tucks hers under her arm. Um, she was also in a dress, but I find it easier to tuck it in between my knees. Mm -hmm. um, so that after I have it tight enough, the middle will kind of start to kink over on its own. We'll just kind of help it out. Then we'll hold that super tight while we twist up our two sides individually. And then I'll kind of pin that one down with my arm so it doesn't come like twisted while I'm twisting up this other side. So then I'll twist up this side. And after I have my two sides nice and tight, I'll take them and I'll twist them together. I've seen a hairdo done like this on TikTok. <laughs> I actually tried it, made the twist stay. So then, <clears throat> after I have a couple of nice tight twists, I'm going to take our two sides and twist them into one side. So this here is what Laura would call the tail tuck up. My tail nice and tight, I'll grab it there. Now obviously as soon as I let go, it's all just going to untwist and mm -hmm. so leave it like this. So we work apart one of the other twists that we made. And then we'll bend our tail over and tuck it in there. And then you have your hay twist. Cool. So you can feel it if you want to. It should be nice and firm in the middle. And you can also feel how oh, sharp wow. that grass is. Yeah. So in the long winter, Laura talks about how making hay twists. She'd have to get patches on her coat because the hay would rip it up. <laughs> Ma had even had to make this homemade kind of chapstick-like thing for their hands because their hands would get so worked up. So it wasn't the most fun job in the world, but they had no other job. Yeah. I did. You learn something new every day. I mean, I learn something new every day. I got hay in my shoes. <laughs> A gopher. Where'd he go? Oh, you see him?
We're at the old Johnson School number 20. This is a prairie school. So not everything looks exactly like it did on the show because the show wasn't exactly the entire story, right? This is the sign outside the school. Flies. Welcome to Johnson School number 20. Little Prairie School Dismet. It stinks in here like old. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, look at how cute. Oh, it is still best to be honest and truthful and to make the most of what you have. Laura Ingalls Wilder. And then it's got the years they were born and died. Huh. In marble walls as white as milk, lined with skin as soft as silk, within a foundation crystal clear, a golden apple doth appear. No doors there are to this stronghold, yet thieves break in and steal the gold. They, you are here. We are here. Maybe we're up here. We're somewhere around here. <laughs> but we're from here. It's an old map. Abacus. Huh. Oh, the little outfits. <laughs> They're so pretty. I bet you none of them have pockets. Oh. So cute. Oh, it says Chicago, Illinois in the corner of it. Huh. All right. Hey, a refrigerator. Oh, cold water. The flies are terrible in here. All right. Time for school. Okay, that was the school, and now we're going to head into the town of Desmet. I think it's like a mile away from the uh, Ingalls Homestead. The Ingalls Homestead, I believe, is what... That's, well, that's the, lane that, the land that he claimed when they were giving away free land, and he got it for $16, and that was just filing fees. But uh, before that or during the longest winter. What was that book? The worst winter they had here in 1880. They lived in the surveyor's house just for that winter. And we're gonna go there and whatever else is in town. Okay, we're at the surveyor's house over there which is where they stayed just that bad winter. And there's a statue back there, but we have to go in here. The tour starts here, or maybe not. We can just walk up here. And there's the beautiful statue of young Laura Ingalls. So pretty. Carrying a basket of flowers. Desmet's first school attended by Laura and Carrie Ingalls in 1880 and 1881. Oh, and there's the bell. Huh. Very covered wagon. And Brewster School. Replica of the Brewster School donated in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Hansen. Wow, 
well. Surveyor's house is the oldest house in Desmet. Oh, no, we can't go in. Yeah. There's a gift shop right there. All right, no more excuses. I'm gonna read the books. The whole set. This is the house that Paul built in town in Desmet after, no, it was, at, yeah, after he bought the, or got the 160 acres. He bought this house in town so that he could be closer to work, I guess. All right, here is the Loftus store, the original Loftus store. That was the, and if you think of TV show sense, it was the Olsons, but it doesn't look anything like it. But this is where it was. Cute little local shop now. They kept the name. in the Desmet Cemetery. We're going to try to find the Ingalls grave sites. Okay, armed with my cemetery map and the fact that this sign says Ingalls grave sites, we know we're here. Ma, Caroline Ingalls Swansea, Swansea, 1870 to 1946. And then Mary, 65 to 28. Baby son of A.J. Wilder. Laura and Almanzo lost their son. I don't think he was even a week old. Oh, Mother Caroline. So who was the other Caroline? Carrie. Okay, that makes more sense. And here is Charles Ingalls, born January 10th, 1838, died June 8th, 1902. All right, this is concluding our visit to Desmet, South Dakota, a little town on the prairie. There is a lot more they offer, however, each thing is a tour, and each tour costs some money. Um, we were in a gift shop where they were saying it was $14 a person. We had already paid $20 a person at another spot. So, yeah, it was going to get expensive if we did every tour. So we did what we did. I hope you enjoyed it. Did you enjoy Little House on the Prairie stuff, babe? It was awesome. <laughs> All right, tell him goodbye. Goodbye, babe. Goodbye, babe.